Good morning, my friends. This is Pastor Vince Wilson, founding pastor of Sacrificial Lamb Ministries in Salisbury, North Carolina. Well, here we are once again. It's another Holy Sabbath day. It's October 31st, 2020. And we are so thankful that the Lord woke us up another morning, another Sabbath morning we have to spend with him to worship him, to lift his name up, to fellowship with others, to be a blessing to others. Yes, we all expect the blessings of God, but guess what? We're not to keep the blessings just to ourselves. We are blessed to be a blessing. And that's how we feel here at Sacrificial Lamb Ministries. It is such a privilege to be able to serve God, to serve under his leadership, and to be a blessing to others in our community and pretty much everyone that we come in contact with. What I wanna to do today is just to spend a few minutes with you, to share some words with you from the Word of God, as well as from the book written by Sister Ellen White called Jesus, Name Above All Names. Jesus, Name Above All Names. Isn't that what it's all about? It's all about Jesus, it's not about us. It's not about us getting all the glory and the attention and all the accolades. It's about others seeing Jesus reflected inside each and every one of us. You know, you may have heard people say that we may be the only Bible that people read. Some people don't have a Bible. Those who have a Bible, they just don't read their Bibles for whatever reason. The cares of the world has taken up their time, whatever the case may be. We are to be an example. Those of us who call ourselves Christians, we are to be an example and to uh, reflect the character of Christ to each and every person that we encounter. So again, I want to share a few words with you today, but before I go any further, I want us to start with a word of prayer. Uh, please bow your heads and close your eyes. Most gracious Heavenly Father, thank you so much that we could wake up once again, that you woke us up in our right minds, you've given us our health and strength, that we could share this special day with you, this holy day that you have set aside. You've said in your word that we have six days in which to do all our work. The Bible says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. And that's what we are here to do today. We've worked. Uh, the past six days. Now, today is a day of rest, your Holy Sabbath day. Thank you so much for your many blessings throughout the week. May today be a special blessing from you. Let us also look for opportunities to be a blessing to others. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. So again, let us go right into the Word of God. If you have your Bibles, please turn with me to the book of 1 John, 1 John, chapter 1, verse 9. Again, 1 John, chapter 9, I'm sorry, 1 John, chapter 1, verse 9. 1 John 1, 9. 1 John 1, 9 says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. Our reading for today, again, Sister Ellen G. White, the book or devotional is called Jesus, Name Above All Names. And today's reading is Sin Pardoning Savior. Again, this is talking about Jesus, right? Sin pardoning Savior. This is what she says. God does not give us up because of our sins. We may make mistakes and grieve his spirit, but when we repent and come to him with contrite hearts, he will not turn us away. There are hindrances to be removed. Wrong feelings have been cherished, and there have been pride, self-sufficiency, impatience, and murmurings. All these separate us from God. Sins must be confessed. 
there must be a deeper work of grace in the heart. Those who feel weak and discouraged may become strong men and women of God and do noble work for the master, but they must work from a high standpoint. They must be influenced by no selfish motives. Again, I'll read. They must be influenced by no selfish motives. As I read on, we must learn in the school of Christ Nothing but his righteousness can entitle us to none of the blessings of the covenant of grace. We have long desired and tried to obtain these blessings, but have not received them because we have cherished the idea that we could do something to make ourselves worthy of them. We have not looked away from ourselves, believing that Jesus is a living Savior. We must not think that our own grace and merits will save us. The grace of Christ is our only hope of salvation. The grace of Christ is our only hope of salvation. Did you get that? Through his prophet, the Lord promises, let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. And that's uh, taken from Isaiah 55 and verse 7. We must believe the naked promise and not accept feeling for faith. When we trust God fully, when we rely upon the merits of Jesus as a sin-pardoning Savior, we, uh, we shall receive all the help that we can desire. We look to self as though we had power to save ourselves, but Jesus died for us because we are helpless to do this. In him is our hope, our justification, our righteousness. We should not depend, I'm sorry, we should not despond and fear that we have no savior or that he has no thoughts of mercy toward us. At this very time, he is carrying on his work in our behalf, inviting us to come to him in our helplessness and be saved. We dishonor him by our unbelief. That comes from Selected Messages, Book 1, uh, pages 350 and 351. So what have you learned? What have you gotten from what I just read? I read a passage from the Word of God, and I just read um, some of what Sister White has to say about Jesus as our sin parting Savior. What stood out for you? What things stand out for you from what I just read? Well, for me, as I said earlier, it's all about Jesus. It's not about us saving ourselves. Some people feel that if they just do, you know, good works, you know, you know, they're doing different things, feeding the homeless, whatever the case may be. Some people feel that their works alone will save them. But my friends, that is not true. Yes, the Bible speaks of faith without works is dead. So we can walk around here and say, oh, I have so much faith. Um, but we have to show how much faith we have by our works, yes, but our works alone will not save us. It is Jesus who is our sin-pardoning Savior. And I just want to look back at this again. Some things uh, jumped out for me, some things I underlined that I want to just, you know, just touch on again just for a few minutes. In the beginning of what I read, God does not give us up because of our sins. God does not give up on us. If we come to him sincerely asking for forgiveness, having that, uh, uh, that contrite heart, he will not turn us away, my friends. He won't. He is waiting with open arms for us, waiting for us to come to him, asking for forgiveness, looking for us to repent of our sins, and the Bible says that he will in no wise 
uh, 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 turn away from us. In essence, that's what the, the word is saying. He will no wise turn away from us. He will not turn his back on us. So some people speak about uh, David and the things that David did. Yes, David did some bad things, but we know the Bible says that he was a man after God's own heart. What does that mean? That means that when he repented, he came to God with a sincere spirit. In other words, he came to God sincerely looking for forgiveness and his heart was broken and we know that he was forgiven. What else stands out for me? We must not think that our own grace and merits will save us. The grace of Christ is our only hope of salvation. So if I just break that down into two parts, we must not think that our own grace and merits will save us. Well, I've already touched on that, our own merits. Again, there are many people who believe that um, their good works, their own merits will, you know, will get them to heaven, will save them. That's not true. As we've just read here, uh, the Bible speaks about it. Sister White speaks about it here when she says, we must not think that our own grace and merits will save us. It is the grace of Christ. The grace of Christ is our only hope of salvation. So we can do all the good works that we want, but if we do not have the grace of Christ, there's no salvation. That's what I just read, and I hope that's what you're getting from what I just read as well. Also, what else stood out for me? We must not believe, I'm sorry, we must believe the naked promise and not accept feeling for faith. So it's not about feeling, it's about faith. We must not accept feeling for faith. When we trust God fully, when we rely upon the merits of Jesus as a sin parting savior, we shall receive all the help that we can desire. So again, it's not about us. It's not about what we've done. It's about the merits of Jesus and what he did for us when he died for us shed his blood for us on that cross. That's what matters, okay? At this very time, he is carrying on his work in our behalf, inviting us to come to him in our helplessness and be saved. He's looking for us, my friends. He's inviting us to come to him and be saved. Many of us are, you know, we're in sin. And, uh, you know, the Bible says we all sin and fall short of the glory of God. Yes, we know this. But some of us, uh, you know, we just carry on. And um, there's something called uh, presumptuous sin, which basically means that we know what we're doing is wrong. But, hey, you know, uh, God will forgive me. I know what I'm not supposed to do. I know I shouldn't be doing this. But, hey... You know, God is going to forgive me anyway, so um, why, you know, why stop? I just can't stop. Some people believe in once saved, always saved. That's not true either. Because, yes, we can confess. We can, uh, you know, we can repent, confess our sins, uh, be forgiven today, yes. A justification is another name for forgiveness. But then we can go out here tomorrow and, and sin again or, you know, do the same sin again. But if we do not continue to go back to Christ and seek forgiveness, yes, there is such a thing as losing your salvation. Yes, we have to always abide in Christ. Whenever we sin, we must go to Christ seeking forgiveness with a sincere heart. We can't assume that or uh, presume that we could just keep sinning all is well. I'll just keep sinning. I'll be forgiven. No problem. So we can't have that mindset, my friends. We dishonor him by our unbelief. We dishonor him by our unbelief. We have to believe, my friends. We have to believe that Jesus is our sin-pardoning Savior. It is through him that we are saved, right? So I hope that these words have blessed you today. 
you can always come back to this video as a reminder of the one who can save us from our sins. We can't save ourselves by our good works alone and thinking we could just work our way to heaven. It is through Jesus Christ that we are saved. I'm going to close with a word of prayer, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Father in heaven, thank you so much for this time we had together. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the spirit of prophecy as well. Sister White says that her words are not above your words. She is a lesser light pointing to the greater light, who is you. Thank you so much that we had this opportunity to share your word, to study your word. Help us to remember that it is through you that we are saved. We cannot work ourselves to heaven. It is not based on our merits. It is based on your merits, on what you did on that cross for us. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. My friends, take care. Have a blessed one. And we'll see you again soon.